Three, two, one. Hi everyone, welcome to Property Zone. Today, uh, we have uh, we our honor to invite our speaker here, Sean Lee, to share with us about the topic of what happened in the property market 2018 and understanding the government policy from now onwards. Welcome. Good to see you again, Ashley. Yeah. yeah. So uh, before we get started today, in order to win the prize, you can actually answer the questions. So our questions today is, what do you think about Malaysia property markets from now onwards and why? So you answer this and you will win, uh, you will win our this Sony LCD radio alarm clock. All right. So can I, so I would like to ask you something like, can you share with us the property market situation in 2018? Okay, um, you have come to the second half of 2019. Yeah. Initially, the data, I take some time to generate that out. Yeah. So I'm um, just going to highlight some of the data uh, presented in NAPIC. NAPI basically stands for National Property Information Center. Okay. This is the government uh, statistics department. They come up with a statistic okay. that gives us an overall view mm -hmm. of what's going on in 2018. So, mm. but the data is quite comprehensive. So, yeah. in order to you know summarize <laughs> and give the, <laughs> yeah. the best summarized details to to the audience, and uh, I want to highlight two things. I think one thing um, because we focus more on residential, mm -hmm. so I'll just zoom in immediately to residential. Mm. And in residential, basically, we look at what happened in 2018. Mm -hmm. There are the two main criteria we look at. Mm. One is the transaction volume. All right. The other is of transaction value. Okay. All right. Now. In 2018, <coughs> the market doesn't have much changes, mm -hmm. but it does register a growth. 1.4% mm. growth in terms of the total transaction volume and 0.4% growth mm. in terms of total transaction value. Mm. Now, this small little percentage may not seem very significant, mm -hmm. right? But I think uh, we should take a look backwards in terms of a few years back. From 2014, 15, 16, mm -hmm, 17, mm -hmm. our property market actually registered a negative growth. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So this increase a bit in the few percentage, 0 0.4, 1.4%, yeah. may not be seen very significant to many. But the important things we look at is um, the direction. Yeah. Just imagine this. If you are the captain of a ship, if you're gonna go from point A to point B, mm -hmm. right? A little bit change of the directions in your steering eventually from now onwards, uh, going towards the direction, uh, you create a vast difference of yeah. where you want to go. So, the property chain has been going down, right? Yeah. The growth may not be seen significant, 0.4 and 1.4%. But the direction that is going, heading towards, we are already went through the consolidation phase. So, other than the transaction volume and also the value, right? Mm. And is there another thing that you caught your attention? Okay. In, in the statistic is quite comprehensive. Uh -huh. There are statistics we look at in terms that were affecting, that tell us what happened in the past. Okay, cool. But I think, I think most of us agree, right? Mm. I think it's not so much of what happened in the past, mm -hmm. but what rather we want to get information about what is going to happen in future mm -hmm. that will affect our property investment specifically, yeah, the this, result of it. This is what we want to know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think, in terms of uh, the data, uh. the information that I look at NAPI, and one caught my eyes is basically the new launches. Okay. The new launches will present a supply coming into the future. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So there are two states, the main two states representing Klang Valley, which is Slango and KL. Mm. These are the ones that representing the growth of Klang Valley in mm. particular. So this one, one caught my eyes is actually KL. Kuala Lumpur. Mm. Kuala Lumpur, the new launches uh, in mm. 2018 uh, mm. has dropped the most. Has dropped the most. 56.1%. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. So it means that this is the data that will present the future supply coming to the market. Okay. So if I can give you some uh, a, sh a sharing that what happened in 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. we have this subprime crisis. Mm -hmm. Of course, one of the things that, no, uh, stimulate the growth, property growth, the big jump from 2008 and 2013. Of course, it's the ease, easing monetary policy, mm -hmm. but the second also short of supply coming to the market. 
mm. because at the time 2018 2019 not very many developers coming to uh, the yeah. game and develop because so, of some uh, some uh, rules and regulations rules and regulation market sentiments don't, yeah. they don't know whether if they come up with the project they will buy or not yeah. so i think we are seeing a similar thing at this moment as developers are cutting down a lot of new launches mm, yeah sentiment there's mm-hmm, one thing mm-hmm. uh, ongoing trade war effects mm-hmm. and also they are looking at the bank's lending criteria is uh, it's quite it's, tough it's a, yeah so that's tough. why i think that's mean the the main reason you see a sharp drop in mm-hmm. terms of new launches especially in kl Mm. 56.1% which is tremendous wow. yeah didn't know that all right so uh, and i know that recently government has announced the extensions of the hoc right what yeah. do you think about this okay basically hoc just just to recap a bit stand for house ownership campaign mm-hmm. basically is an initiative of the government mm. to encourage the house ownership mm. they want to make it easier for most people especially the first time home buyer mm. to get their house they want Mm. All right. So to, through this initiative, initiative, the government basically waive mm-hmm. some fees. Mm. Actually, they come to two parts. Mm-hmm. They will waive the stamp duty on the loan part, which mm-hmm. is zero point five percent. The other one is more significant, which is the MOT. Mm. The MOT plus the loan stamp duty. Uh, loan stamp duty. If the purchaser now, the home buyer now, is to buy the uh, units mm-hmm. from those registered developer mm. under HOC campaign. They will mm-hmm. be able to waive the loan stamp duty and the MOT. So in this case, the house ownership, to buy a house, especially for a first time home buyer, mm. is easier. So previously, so from June, now extended to end of the year. This shows that the government actually encourage more of those kind of uh, first time home buyer to buy house, right? Yes, especially. So are you looking at again? It's it's actually the mm. direction because not too long ago mm. we are seeing the um, bank as tightening credit. Mm-hmm. And the government actually introduced the even after five years, you still have to pay the five percent of PGT. Yeah. So this is seen as a cooling measurement. Mm. Started uh, from the budget yeah. last year. Yeah. So now it has come to the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. You're seeing some changes. The first, of, of course, um, this HOC encouraging home ownership, mm. and second, not too long ago, they cut the OPR, the mm. overnight policy rate. Yeah. So what I'm seeing is the government towards the property market, the direction mm-hmm. and the measurement. Mm-hmm. It's still a bit different in terms of direction wise. Yeah. yeah. So that's why just now you mentioned that you know like uh, our development has been reducing, and uh, of course the government increased on I mean uh, extended on the HOC. So as like just now you mentioned about the reducing right of the development. Um, what is the what is what is the effect or maybe some react on this part? Do you have any ideas? What was that? affecting yeah i think the other one uh if you can remember basically is the plot ratio that i talked to you before because yeah. now uh reduce plot ratio that means that last time if you buy a piece of land as a developer mm. you can build more condos mm. Mm. but now the plot ratio now is limited to 10 maximum so basically mm. compared to those who are going to approve at 13 14 mm-hmm. now those who have not started work need to reapply and the maximum plot ratio is skipped at 1 to 10. But is this a good thing for the for the development and for the economy or not? Um, of course, there are pros and cons to it. But mm-hmm. from developer point of view, or if I buy this piece of land yeah. now, because of the new uh, regulation, I can only build less house. Yeah, but I think this is not good for developer, right? Yes. But how fact, about from the from the from the this demand the buyer side, like from like us? Okay, from property buy, it also depends, right? Whether you ha- you are the person who are looking to buy a house, or you mm-hmm. bought a house, mm-hmm. or you have few houses. Mm. So one of the spill over effect from this higher property ratio, mm-hmm. it could be, let's say, running a bit some business point of view, I'm the developer. Mm-hmm. Now by using the same piece of land, mm-hmm. I can build less house. Mm. The feasible thing for me to do is basically I need to increase the selling price of the house because I have less unit to sell. Yeah, the supply is lesser. Supply is lesser. Yeah. I, need, I need to increase the price times the top number of units in this development mm. so that I can still get the business revenue according to my target. Yeah. yeah. So if it's good or bad, but of course it's not so good for those not yet buying, yeah. but are looking to buy later. Yeah. But of those who, who already are bought? already bought, this could be a cost, a cost push effect from mm. the surrounding project. I see. Yeah. Oh, that would be great, huh? So then, um, because I know that uh, just these few years, because how, uh, our housing ministers announced that the PTPTM payment, 
uh, the amounts that you recorded will be taken off from this uh, secrets, right? Yeah. So what is your view then? Okay, I think if you have read news, if you read Facebook, a newspaper, PTPN has been a big thing even after the new government took over, mm, right? Yeah. At first they said they want to abolish it. Yeah. Right? No need to pay, everybody's so happy. Then suddenly, no, everybody have to they pay. feel that you can't because <laughs> yeah. the total amount owed in PTBN mm. is greater than the 1MDB saga. <laughs> True. So they okay. realize that, okay, but to keep the promise, what they do is that they still allow the PTPDN people mm. to travel overseas. To travel, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. <huh? laughs> but coming back to this is, Last time, as you know, that you know when you want to apply loan to buy a house, uh -huh. the bank will access your few things. You know, we call four C, four C. You know, in diamond we got carrot. <laughs> uh, you have card. You have charity. Uh -huh. okay. But C, for the four C, they are looking at the to access your repayment mm -hmm. ability. They will look at your capability, All right. your capacity, and also the character. Mm. This is how hard. do you have a lot of one or two or three on in the a secret, secret. Right. Mm -hmm. so now by taking the PTPD, uh, the PTPN mm -hmm. amount off mm -hmm. from the debt servicing ratio yeah. also from the repayment record mm. of course at this point of view is encouraging the people to buy more prices. right yeah i actually talked to people who are in mortgage line you know, yeah. they, they are mortgage broker uh -huh. this policy still is still a bit unclear whether that the banker still access to see your repayment record. Let's say, for mm. example, you were supposed to pay 300 ringgit mm. on your PTPDN a month, mm. okay, based on your repayment schedule. But if you have not been paying for six months, mm. right, even though I should not consider your 300 ringgit repayment to your PTPDN mm -hmm. into the total debt servicing, but I will also be concerned, right, you have not been paying for six months. Mm. If this is your attitude, if this is your character towards mm. your repayment record, if the bank still have this access to gauge, I think the bank would not so easy mm. in terms of lending out the people who have For so sure. good character. Mm. Yeah, but of course the clear policy we, we need to know later because it's just announced less than two, one two weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah, so there's pro and cons also, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then, how about the foreigner like the out, outside of Malaysia? So any international news you can also update us? Yeah, I want to share. Sometimes. Mm. When you want to find out what happened in Malaysia property or where it's going to go, mm -hmm. sometimes not just what happened internally, mm -hmm. but I think internationally it will affect us also. Yeah. So uh, to summarize a few of the things mm -hmm. I, uh, I can share with uh, all of you today is, mm -hmm. uh, I think first we look at US because US is going to be the superpower, it's still the superpower all over. Yep. And what we are looking at basically mm -hmm. the monetary policy from US which is determined by Fed, Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve is basically like a bank that got it. They are the one who determine you know, what's the interest rate going to be. Mm. So from end, until end of last year, they are still talking about increasing the interest rate because the stock market mm. in US has been going so well, doing yeah. so. Mm. Just yesterday, Dow Jones, you know, S&P 500, they have the record's highest uh, what is it, performance. Mm -hmm. Never in US history, Dow Jones and S&P can reach this high. Oh. So, but at the same time, because of the trade war mm -hmm. uh, ongoing, it's thus affecting China, US, and the rest of the world. But what they are looking at is actually the potential impact towards the US market and mm -hmm. US economy at home. So, so now it's US short, is considered good? Now US stock market is performing good. But right. at the same time, underlying, mm -hmm. they are looking at the potential impact that are currently already impacting the US economy. Okay. So what they're doing now is they are foreseeing this and from talking about increased interest rate mm -hmm. to hold interest rate mm -hmm. and the reason new is this month the Fed is going to make announcement on the interest rate policy again mm -hmm. and most of the people from expecting, predicting, I'm talking about analysts, uh, predicting the increase in increment till now is most people expecting 0.25% or we call 25 basis point cut yep. and some even predicted. Mm -hmm. 50 basis point or 0.5% cut. So, of course, easing money policy will have an impact on the world. Uh, the second one, we'll talk about China. Mm -hmm. China also doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. China has not been touching their rate, increase, uh, reducing their rate in mm -hmm. four years. Mm -hmm. So, this is the time they are looking at China and potential rate cut from China as well. So, uh, they, they, they suddenly they have a cut. 
Yes. Oh, what's yeah, I have, I have not announced, but based on the prediction of the analysts from last time, they predict increased interest rate increment. Now they are looking at potential 0.25% up to 0.5% interest rate cut in US. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, um, China, US, I mentioned about the third one is basically Singapore. 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 I think if you have Our followed neighbor. the news, yes, because it's very close to us <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah. actually a developed country. Uh -huh. So China, uh, Singapore is basically an export oriented, is a trading country. Okay. But what happened in Singapore now? Mm -hmm. They are the one few directly from the US and China trade war, and in fact, is it? in the last ten years, mm -hmm. okay, their GDP result just came out. They based GDP just a gauge to see how well the economy is performing from any country. Mm -hmm. So Singapore, mm -hmm. on annualized basis, uh, yeah. their GDP is contracting 3.4%. Meaning it's shutting up. It's going down. Going down, 3.4% going down. Negative 3.4%. Oh, so see. Malaysia is growing, if it's at 4%, that means the economy is growing at 4%. Oh. If you have negative 3.4% annualized, that means this country, down. the economy is contracting, is reducing by 3.4% okay. every year. Mm. So, But what, what's the reason that you know they, I mean, they're being affected so much? Many things to do so is affected trade war. Trade war. Because mm. Singapore is trading a lot. Mm. So when the trade stops, China is you know, imposing tariff on uh, US and US imposing tariff on China, they still the trade a from, share, US, uh, yeah. from Singapore will be definitely affected. Yeah. yeah. So, other than that, do you have any others to share with us? I think the future one, uh, there were direct implications will be the internal one. The internal so, one. the one we mentioned, uh, no, the redux, uh, reduction in OPR mm -hmm. recently. So, they are also looking at will Malaysia reduce the OPR if US, China, Singapore is reducing. So, what, what I'm talking do you about, think? <laughs> If China, US and Singapore yeah. will be reducing interest rate, I think not just Malaysia, I think the rest of the world uh -huh. will actually have to draw back. Mm. So if because if they're not if you have a big disparity in terms mm -hmm. of interest rate between Malaysia and China, US, your economy cannot survive. So I can foresee that because of our OPR has been reducing, well, which are on the f first phase, and uh, our DHOC HOC has been extended as well, and PTPTN has been also, you know, uh, being uh, given a green light that you know they don't need to check on the secrets. So with all this, right, I would say it's actually a, a positive sign yeah. that for the next six half of this two zero one nine, I think will be very good right and the other things that I will add on is that talking about government policy the one mm -hmm. we mentioned is really what they have done all right, right? but just imagine this yeah. there are two things uh, I think mm -hmm. is uh, two of the biggest hurdles in terms of property market to mm -hmm. grow all right of course the, the first one is the LTV 70% we already know that people who have more than two mortgages well, their yeah. maximum loan amount for the yeah. third is 70% yes there's one in place and the second one is the RBGT Right mm. after more than five years, you're supposed to pay the five percent. Yes, yes. But these two are not fixed rule forever. Yeah. Do you remember the changing of direction the government yeah. towards encouraging the house ownership? Just imagine this: if you are a property investor, if, mm. or you are interested in property, mm -hmm. right, looking to buy, just take a moment and think about this: what if today, right? Mm -hmm. I say, what if today, mm -hmm. or what if the, in the near future, mm -hmm. the government take away these two policies? For example, if they're no longer implementing the LTV 7% mm -hmm. because they want to encourage more mm -hmm. home ownership mm -hmm. or they give it a more flexible or lower the, the RPGT rate, mm -hmm. maybe instead of more than 5 years, yeah. limit to 5 years, instead of 30%, they reduce to 20%. Yeah. This would actually have a direct impact on yeah, yeah, the government. Yeah. So the day I will share with you is not just of what has the government announced mm -hmm. and based on the direction they are taking now towards encouraging mm -hmm. the house ownership mm. i'm actually expecting the next move as in what if they stop doing this ltv 7% mm -hmm. or reducing the rbgt rate mm -hmm. can you imagine the the impact the sentiment they would give and translate to the property market mm. so are you taking a position yeah because sometimes normally the one who make the most is the one who are the... making a move stay ahead yeah. yeah. Mm, so, 
the uh, the this one is actually based on the buyers you know whether they see it on the positive sides or whether they think that you know that whether they want to put a hole but as for what i see from here i think government actually um they really encourage the home buyers to buy now so that you know like uh, we have a lot of benefits in, instead of like last year we don't have all these things so we can save some costs as well and uh, i was i i can foresee that if let's say governments they 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 take off the just now the two options talking about the LTV and also this uh, what's what's the another one, the, RPGT. Yep, the RPGT. Then of course it it's not announced yet, but I'm just thinking about what if and yeah. you start can analyzing the impact. Yeah, but I think that now will be uh at, as for now it is considered a very good sign that you know that we can actually invest. So thank you so much for coming today and okay. looking forward to see you again. Before we end. Uh, just to remember that uh, we, in order to win our Sony LCD's uh, radio alarm clock, so what you can do is you can answer these questions. So uh, what do you think about Malaysia property market from now and onwards? So see you again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.